What's up guys, I'm Chris Doughty from Armour RC. In this video, I'm gonna go through every step you need to know to take your Armour Boost 4x2 to be four wheel drive using the 4x4 Boost Box in the Armour 4x4 Boost Box. We have the instruction manual, which we'll be going through in detail, the 4x4 decal sheet, the long center drive shaft, and the short center drive shaft extension, and also the front differential and outboard axles. First step is to remove the body from your vehicle. We will retain this for later use. Let's just pop that over there. And then we're gonna remove the front wheels and tires using the Armour multi-tool. Make sure you retain the wheel nuts for future use. I like to use the wheel as a bit of a car stand. Just helps to keep the vehicle stable while you're maintaining. Again, retaining the nuts for future use. Put the wheel and tire to one side and we're ready to begin. Step number one is to remove the outer upper camber links and the lower shock mounts and we'll use a two millimeter uh, hex driver starting with the upper outer camber link. Retaining the screws we'll be installing those later on and the lower shock mount. The lower shock mount includes a washer. I leave it on the screw so I know that is the lower shock mount screw and then repeat the same for the other side of the vehicle. Saving the screws. And again, the lower shock mount screw. I leave the washer on the screw so I know that's the one that goes in the lower shock mount. Step number two is to remove the hex from the uh, two wheel drive wheel axle. Um, it's difficult to pull this hex off. I like to use the back side of a pair of pliers just to push on the axle until you hear a click and then you can uh, remove the hex much more easily and retain, uh, remove and retain the pin and then once the pin's out you can remove the axle. The axles won't be used in the four wheel drive conversion and then repeat for the opposite side. Remove the hex, cautious when removing the hex to make sure the pin doesn't drop out. Keep the hex and the pin to one side to reinstall later. Remove the two wheel drive wheel axle and then store that to one side for the future. Uh, moving on to step number three, we're gonna install the uh, four wheel drive front axles. So you're gonna install them in the same way you remove the two wheel drive axles. Through the bearings, add the pin. and add the uh, wheel hex, aligning the slot in the hex with the pin just installed. And then repeat the same for the other side. Align the pin, install the 40 millimeter drive hex. That completes uh, step number four. On to step number five, we're gonna switch to a 2.5 millimeter hex driver to remove the screws on the underside of the chassis. There are uh, four screws to remove. They will be this rear one here, these two in the middle, and this forward one. With a 2.5 millimeter driver. Keeping these screws safe, we'll be reinstalling these later on.
with those four screws removed, we can move on to step number six, and that's to remove the uh, two-wheel drive blanking plate. So with those four screws removed, we can pull the front shock tower assembly forwards and expose the two-wheel drive blanking plate and simply remove this part. Put it to one side, we won't be using that in the four-wheel drive conversion. Over the page, the step number seven, we're gonna be installing the front differential. Important to install the diff in the correct orientation. Look out for the shape here matches with the shape in the chassis and upper shock tower. It's important to connect the drive shafts as you install the front differential. I like to connect one side first and then pass the front diff through and then connect the other drive shaft while the diff is still loose. Once both drive shafts are connected, you can lower the diff into the chassis and it fits like so. After you've installed the diff into the chassis, uh, just take a little bit of gear grease. I normally like to use a, a, a driver just to, just to wipe a bit of gear grease onto the teeth, which will allow the gears to run nice and smoothly. Uh, you're going to be closing the uh, front gearbox now. Move the shocks and camber links out of the way and then close the box like so and that's all good uh, step number eight is to reinstall those lower screws that we removed earlier I like to reinstall the rearward screw first and then go through and reinstall the remaining three screws If you are using a power tool for this part of the process, be cautious not to over tighten any of the screws. Step number eight is complete. On to step number nine, which involves reattaching the upper uh, camber links and the lower shock mounts. Uh, using the screws we removed before, the upper camber link is with the screw that does not have the washer. Switching back to the two millimeter hex driver for this operation. And the lower shock mount is installed with the screw that does contain the washer. Again, always make sure not to over tighten any of these screws. Repeat the process for the other side of the vehicle. And then again, the lower shock mount, the one with the washer. Uh, step number 10 is to install the center drive shaft in the 4x4 boost box. It comes with two length center drive shafts with the longest one pre-assembled. If you remove the larger part of the drive shaft and the spring, two length drive shafts you have available. The larger one is for the Centon, the shorter one is for the Vortex and the Granite. In this example, we're gonna build it with a granite, install the spring like so, and then reconnect the drive shaft. And that is your short center drive shaft. To install the center drive shaft, you're gonna to wanna to install the narrow part of the drive shaft to the front, pushing it forwards, aligning with the spline at the front till it connects and then load the drive shaft until it connects with the rear part of the drive shaft and then your center drive shaft is installed. At this point, we're gonna reinstall the front wheels and tires. I like to put the nuts in the nut driver, which helps to line it up with the axle. Make sure the hex on the wheel is aligned with the hex on the axle and then tighten the wheel as so. 
and then repeat for the other side to install the remaining wheel. The four-wheel drive boost installation is complete. Your Armour 4x2 boost vehicle is now four-wheel drive. You're almost good to go, but the most important step, your 4x4 boost box comes with a decal sheet. Let's show everyone that your car is now 4x4. Boom, you're good to go. I hope you found this video very helpful. If you have, then smash that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon to be notified of any new uploads. On screen right now will be links to fantastic armor products. Go over there and check them out. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>